Gee whiz. Hello, friends. My name is John Henderson. Welcome to this series of old-time radio show episodes called Gee Whiz. These are stories of the schemes, trials, and loves of the typical American teenagers, Andy Hardy, Archie Andrews, and Henry Aldridge. Coming up, we've got Archie going Christmas shopping, but first, the Aldridge family. This episode is originally from 1940. Henry Aldridge, do you mean to say you lost that beautiful watch she sent you? No, Mary, I'm sure I can find it. Oh, my goodness, if you can you know how depressed Aunt Harriet gets over a thing like that. That isn't the half of it. She said if I'd take good care of it, maybe she'd give me a new bicycle. <laughs> Herbert, let me see the watch you have on. Now, listen, Henry, this isn't yours. It's exactly like mine, It's Herbert. the same make, but is your strap worn as much as this? No. Was the second hand going? No, but could I borrow that watch just for this evening? Over a decade later, they remade the episode using the same script and just a few minor adjustments. Now, normally, I prefer the episodes with the original Henry Aldridge actor, Ezra Stone, but in this case, the episode works a bit better in the later version. Here it is from December 7th, 1952. The Aldridge Family on NBC. <laughs> Coming, Mother. Yes, it's the Aldrich family is transcribed. Written by Clifford Goldsmith. Boys always look forward to growing up and becoming men. But once that's happened, they often enough look back upon the time when they were boys. Those were the good old days. And with a teenage boy like Henry Aldridge around, they were also the unpredictable days. The scene opens in the Aldridge living room. The time is early evening. Mary. Oh, Mary. What is it, Henry? Have you seen my new wristwatch anyplace? Your wristwatch? Where did you leave it? I didn't leave it anyplace. I just can't find it. Mary, you haven't finished what you were doing in the kitchen. I'm going right back there, Mother. And, Henry, I want you to go upstairs and get washed. Yes, Mother, just as soon as I finish looking for something. And wash especially well, dear. Remember, Aunt Harriet's going to be here for dinner. Sure, I know. And you know how closely she looks at things. May I ask why you're upsetting all the cushions on the sofa? Nothing. Oh, but I just happened to be looking for something. Now, I certainly hope you wrote Aunt Harriet and thanked her for the lovely wristwatch she sent you. Yes, Mother, I wrote it the minute I heard she was coming. <laughs> you didn't find anything out of the ordinary when you swept under the sofa, did you? What would you call out of the ordinary? Nothing. Just dust or something. Mother, what time shall I put the potatoes on? Henry, what time is it? Why, well, it's exactly... Well, it's about, uh... Well, I would say... The time is exactly 26 minutes after 6. Hello, Father. Boy, am I glad to see you. Put the potatoes on right away, Mary. Henry, I hope you're going to wash before Aunt Harriet gets here. You sure, Father. I'll attend to it right after I... After I... May I ask why you're crawling around on the carpet? Oh, I, I just wanted to look under this chair for a minute, Father. Have you seen anything lying around that's sort of round and shiny? Such as what? Well, if you saw it, you couldn't help but notice it. Father, Mother wants to know if you'll bring that picture Aunt Harriet gave us down from the attic. Which one? The Colosseum in Ruins. Oh, yes. I'll go right up and get it. And, Henry, Mother says that at dinner you're to sit on Aunt Harriet's right. On her right? Where she can see my left wrist? Henry Aldrich, do you mean to say you lost that beautiful wristwatch she sent you? No, Mary, I'm sure I can find it. My goodness, if you can't... You know how depressed Aunt Harriet gets over a thing like that. That isn't the half of it. She said if I took good care of it, next time she'd give me a camera. Henry, have you dressed yet? Right away, Mother. I want you to spend at least 20 minutes getting clean. Yes, Mother. And don't forget to take your wristwatch off before you get in the shower. Oh, boy. <laughs> Mary, if anyone asks where I am, tell them I'll be right back. Where are you going? I just happened to remember I left my watch across the street at Eleanor's. I'll be right back. 
Can't you help me look for my watch, Homer? Are you sure you left it here at my house? I must have. I've just been over at Eleanor's and it isn't there. Henry, I don't see how you could lose a watch in my room. This is where I remember wearing it last. Well, gee whiz. Homer, let me see that watch you have on. Now, listen, Henry, this isn't yours. It's exactly like mine, Homer. Well, sure, it's the same make. But is your strap worn as much as this? No. Was your second hand gone? No. But if I could borrow your wristwatch just for this evening... Oh, no, Henry. You don't know how to take care of a watch. I've never ruined the strap or busted my second hand, have I? No, but you've lost the whole watch. (laughs) Listen, Homer, if I give you a half interest in a camera somebody might be going to give me, would you let me wear your watch tonight? What good would half a camera do? All right, then, Homer. If I give you all of my allowance for the week of February 15th, will you let me borrow your watch? Why would I have to wait that long? I owe everything until then. I wouldn't be interested. But, Homer, supposing my Aunt Harriet asks me what time it is? Well, supposing my parents ask me what time it is? All right, give me a phone call. I'll be glad to tell you. (laughs) Would you... Would you give me, uh, two weeks' allowance? Sure, it's a deal. Okay, it's a deal. Shake, shake, shake. And, Homer, if there's ever anything I can do for you of any nature whatsoever, just you name it. Here you are, Henry. Here's my watch. Boy, thanks, Homer. Gee, I've got to run. It's a good thing we're eating dinner late tonight. And now be careful with it. Homer! What is it, Mother? Do you have the correct time? Why, uh... Uh... It's exactly 12 minutes to 7, Mrs. Brown. Homer, could you come here a minute, please? But, Mother, don't you think I ought to straighten up the house first? Will you please come here? Well, sure. Something gone wrong, Mother? May I see your watch, please? My watch? I didn't by any chance hear you say you were giving it to Henry, did I? To Henry? Well, I, uh, I certainly didn't give it to him. I, I loaned him my watch. Homer Brown. But, Mother, he's going to give me his allowance for the last two weeks in February. Homer, do you realize how much your father paid for that watch? You mean I should give him part of the money? I want you to march over to Henry's house and get that wristwatch this minute. Right now? At once. But, Mother, isn't a bargain a bargain? Homer, do you want me to tell your father? Okay, I'll go. And if you dare come home without your watch, you'll go without your allowance for one entire month. Ask Harriet whether she won't have another piece of steak. More steak, Harriet? No, thank you. How many nights a week can you people afford steak? We're really having this for you, Harriet. Calves' liver would have been good enough. Where's Henry? He ought to be down any minute, Aunt Harriet. I heard him run upstairs just a little while ago. Father never let us be late when we were children. Henry? Yes, Father? Do you realize we're practically through with dinner? I'll be right there. I'm washing. Uh, Sam, as long as you have so much steak, give me that piece next to the bone. Certainly. What on earth is that? Henry! Hello, Aunt Harriet. Oh, how are you, Henry? Fine. Oh, I'm awfully sorry I'm late. Didn't you know what time it was? Oh, yes, Father. It's ten minutes after seven. Henry, you mean you found your... What, Mary? Nothing. Nothing. Will you have some bread, Aunt Harriet? No, thank you. Aunt Harriet, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the watch you gave me. Why didn't you write me about it? I did. Didn't you get my letter? I did not. Oh, let me see the watch, Henry. You mean up close? (laughs) Now, who could that be? I'll see who it is. Mary, pass Aunt Harriet the potatoes. Yes, Mother. So you really like the watch, Henry? Aunt Harriet, I wouldn't part with it for anything. Good evening, Mrs. Aldridge. Hello, Homer. Could I speak to Henry a minute? I'm sorry, but Henry's at dinner. But I just have to see him. We're having a guest, Homer. Well, uh, can I go into the dining room and speak to him? Uh, You'd better go back home and see him tomorrow morning. Oh, no, I can't. I'll wait here until he's through. But Henry will be busy all evening. But, Mrs. Aldridge... Homer, I'm quite sure anything you have to say can wait until morning. Goodbye, dear. Okay, Mrs. Aldridge. The only... Who is it, Alice? My goodness, Homer Brown never comes over to this house except when we're eating. Who doesn't? Homer. Oh, Homer? 
Homer Brown? He's the only Homer you know, isn't he? <laughs> well, what's the matter with him? Nothing, nothing. Are you all through, Henry? Yes, Father, I've caught up with you. I'll clear the table, then. Mary, you helped with the dinner. I'm sure Henry would be glad to clear the table. Oh, yes, Mother. Sure. Should Aunt Harriet keep her watch? Uh, I mean her fork? No, dear. We have clean ones. Oh, okay. Henry, don't break anything going through that door. No, I won't. Put everything on the big kitchen table, dear. Yes, Mother. If a body meets a body coming through the rye... Da, 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 da. Henry. Hey, Henry. She was. Who's that? It's me. Homer, where are you? Here, behind the refrigerator. <laughs> listen, Henry, I've got to have my watch. But listen, Homer, aren't I paying you for the use of it? But if I don't get it, I'll lose a month's allowance. Homer, you can't go back on a bargain. But you shouldn't have talked me into it. Listen, Homer. Do I or don't I get my watch? Let me have it just until the end of dinner. No. Henry. Yes, Mother? When are you coming back for the rest of these dishes? Right away, Mother. Yeah, Henry, wait. Homer, i got to get back. I'm going to stay right here, Henry, until I get that wristwatch. No, Homer. Henry! I'm just putting the dishes down carefully, Mother. Uh, here I come. Was there something you wanted? I'll take the rest of the things out myself. Wait, Mother. I'll take everything in one load. Henry, look out! I haven't spilled a thing. Please sit down. I'll take these things out. But, Mother... Why not at least let Mary? She's good at things like that. Mary's done more than her share. But I haven't. Please sit down. I'll be right back with the pie, Harriet. What's the matter with you, Henry? Well, uh, well, I, I just don't like to see my own mother wear herself to pieces. <laughs> and must you drink an entire glass of water in one gulp? Oh, my goodness gracious! <laughs> Henry, what are you doing? <laughs> here, here, let me slap you on the back. <laughs> All right, Aunt Harriet. What do you think I found in the kitchen? Listen, Mother, let me explain. Explain? I left the burner on under a new pan. You left the burner on? I did. Here, Harriet, is a piece of pie for you. Well, I couldn't eat a piece that big unless there's some cheese to go with it. Mm, I have the cheese right here. Fine. Where are you going now, Mother? <clears throat> Back to get the rest of the pie. I don't want any. But, Henry, the rest of us might. Oh, oh sure. Of course. Mary! Yes, Mother? How many pieces of pie did you cut? Five. Well, I brought in two, and when I just went back out, there were only two left. There's one missing? There is. I guess Mary only cut four. But I'm sure I cut five. Well, don't go back, Mother. I can't eat a thing. It's the best pie I ever ate. Now, what could that be? That whistle? Yes. Oh, I imagine it's just one of the fellas outside or something. Well, it sounded as though it were right here in this house. It sounded as though it was in the cellar. In the cellar, Mary? Well, that's ridiculous. But gee whiz, what is there in the cellar that would whistle? Will, will you have some salt, Aunt Harriet? On my pie? <laughs> some people like it. My goodness! Isn't that strange? Sam, is the hot water heater down in the basement all right? Perhaps I'd better go down and see. You just sit still, Father, and finish your pie. I'm halfway out to the kitchen already. Then just turn the draft off. Yes, Father. Hey, Homer. Homer! Homer, are you down here in the basement? Yes, and I want my wristwatch. Boy, it's dark down here. Where are you? In the coal bin. Listen, Homer, do you want me to get into serious trouble? Do you want me to go up and tell your Aunt Harriet that's my watch you have? Homer, I beg of you, with all that's decent inside you, please don't go up. I'm going up right now. All right, Homer, all right. Here's your watch. Gee whiz. Gee whiz, did you drop it? I didn't even have it. You dropped it. Where is it? Don't you have any light in this part of the cell? Why would you want a light in the coal bin? Are you sure you aren't stepping on it? If I am, Henry, you'll be responsible. That's a funny thing. It fell all around the floor and there isn't any sign of it. Let me feel. Hey, do you have it? No, it's a lump of coal. <laughs> hey, what's that? My foot. Oh. Here, Homer, I just found this broom. Stand up in the coal there while I try to find it sweeping. Okay. Henry! Yes, Father? What are you doing down there? I'm sweeping the cellar. 
Sweeping it? Well, well, it's something I should have done weeks ago. Homer, Homer, I found it. It's okay. Oh, yeah? Come on, look, look, look out, Leslie! Homer? Homer, are you Barry? Henry, just give me my watch and let me go home. Henry! Quick, Homer, my father's coming. Well, let me up the stairs. You can't go upstairs. You gotta go in here. In where? In this little room where my father has his workbench and his tools. Okay, but give me my watch. Henry! Hey, don't bother to come down, Father. What's the trouble down there? Are you in there, Homer? Yeah. Well, close the door tight. I can't. There's no latch on the inside. Here, I'll close it. Henry, you didn't give me my watch. Henry, may I ask why you're sleeping the cellar while your Aunt Harriet is having dinner with us? Well, I, I guess I just didn't stop to think, Father. Who closed the door to my workroom? Could I have? I certainly hope you didn't snap that lock, son. It snapped by itself. That's a nice state of affairs. I've told everyone in this house I've lost both keys to that lock and it must not be closed. You mean it can't be opened? Not until I get a locksmith tomorrow morning. We'll return to the Aldrich family in just a moment. One of Hollywood's most wonderful comedians is your star tonight... When Theater Guild on the Air brings you Rosalind Russell. The story will be John Van Druten's romantic comedy, The Damask Cheek. Stay right with NBC through the rest of this evening, and you'll enjoy top adventure listening, too. On Dragnet, for instance, Jack Webb stars as Sergeant Joe Friday in another case history from the files of the Los Angeles Police Force. Another mystery feature will be Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight... Barry, portrayed by William Gargan, tackles the case of Marbles for a Murder. Well, it's a strange title, but an even stranger case, as Barry is hired by a beautiful woman to protect her husband. Barry is on the case only one hour when the husband is found dead, with Barry as the only witness. Listen this evening as Barry Craig, confidential investigator, puts together two and two and comes up with murder. Keep tuned to NBC tonight for top radio entertainment. And now getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldridge. Henry, having lost the new watch his Aunt Harriet gave him, has borrowed one exactly like it from Homer Brown. But Homer, in trying to get the watch back, has gotten locked in Mr. Aldridge's workroom. Well, the scene opens later that night in the Aldridge kitchen. Henry! Yes, Father? Where are you? I'm in the kitchen asking Mary if there's anything I can do to help her. Your Aunt Harriet has been waiting here in the living room for you to come and play canasta with her. Yes, Father, I'll be right there. Listen, Mary, did you put in that phone call? Yes, Henry. What did the locksmith say? His wife said she'd send him over the minute he got home. Did you tell her Homer's been locked in the cellar for more than an hour and a half? Yes, and she was very much impressed. Henry! <laughs> I, I'm coming right away, Father. Don't forget, Henry, what you promised to do for me for putting in that call. All right, Mary, I'll make your bed for you every morning for two weeks. <laughs> and, and if I forget to make it, don't hesitate to remind me. Coming, Father! Well, it's about time. Is Aunt Harriet all ready to play? I am. I'll sit down and deal these cards. Yes, Aunt Harriet. Uh, I give us each 15. Henry, do you know anything about Homer Brown? Homer? Mrs. Brown just phoned. He hasn't been home all evening. Is that right? Oh, the way this younger generation stays out nowadays. <clears throat> My first draw? No, y yes, Aunt Harriet. His mother hasn't seen him for two hours. Boy, does time fly in a crisis. <laughs> In a crisis? I'll go to the door. Oh, you stay right here and play canasta. But that might be for me. I'll see who it is. I'm on my way now. Now, if only I can get a few wild cards. How do you do? How do you do? Sorry to have kept you waiting. Kept me waiting? Yes, ma'am. I'm the locksmith you phoned for. Well, who is it, Mother? Henry, ask your father if he phoned for a locksmith. Is there one out there? Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> well, I didn't phone for you, but I do have a job downstairs you might attend to. Uh, tomorrow morning, say? Father, who is it? Henry, will you please discard? You got somebody locked up downstairs? <laughs> locked up? No, sir. 
Well, this place I was called to has an emergency of some kind. An emergency? Yeah. I better go back to the shop and check with my wife. Oh, I'm sorry. This isn't the house you wanted. Oh, that's okay, lady. All in a day's work. See you tomorrow, sir. Father, is the man gone? Yes. Well, well... Is Mary still out in the kitchen? Yes, dear. I think I'll get Aunt Harriet a glass of water. I don't want any water. Well, gee whiz, I'll be very glad to get it, Aunt Harriet. Mary. What is it, Henry? Mary, you got to phone that locksmith again. Hasn't he come? Sure, only they sent him away. Why'd they do that? Mary, don't you realize my best friend is down in the basement locked in that tool room? Maybe without air? Henry, if you think I'm going to make myself ridiculous by phoning that locksmith every ten minutes, you're crazy. Look, Mary... Would you be interested if I also sweep your room out for you every morning? Well... Henry, where's that glass of water? I'm letting it run, Aunt Harriet. All right, for you, Mary. I'm putting the full responsibility for Homer's condition on your shoulders. Because when Homer comes to, he'll want to know who did this to him. Henry, I haven't even seen Homer. Henry! Uh, yes, Aunt Harriet, coming. Here's your glass of ice-cold water. Thank you. <clears throat> Oh. What did you do? Let the hot water run? <laughs> Is that warm? Well, I'll put it down and let it cool. <laughs> How could that have happened? Um, now, now, where were we in our game? Not very far, I'll tell you that. Uh, well, let's see. I, I discarded, didn't I? I discarded. Oh. Well, then it must be my turn. <laughs> Someone sawing wood? Is what someone sawing wood? Well, well, well. Let's see what cards I've got here. I thought I heard a saw. You still haven't discarded, Henry. Haven't I? <laughs> uh, let's see now. Let's see. Well, well, well. What do you mean, well, well, well? Put your card down. I thought I heard that sawing again. It sounded as though it came from the basement. Well, maybe it's the hot water heater again. <laughs> I didn't even hear it. Well, if you listen, dear, you'll hear something. Now listen. <laughs> Henry, would you please stop singing? I'd like to hear where that sawing is. Oh, excuse me. Dan, Harry, did you know I've been taking piano lessons? I'll play a tune for you. Henry. Yes, Mother? I want you to sit down at that card table, and if I hear one word out of you for the next five minutes, you'll go up to bed. Yes, Mother. Now then, let's just listen. Well? You wait. That's the doorbell. <laughs> I wonder who it could be. Maybe it's that man again. The locksmith? Why would he be back tonight? Well, I'll find out. Stay right where you are, Henry. Aren't you going to do anything with that card, Henry? Hello, Mrs. Aldridge. <laughs> Homer! Mother, is that Homer? Henry, stay here. Homer, what on earth do you have on your clothes? Just a little cold, Mrs. Aldridge. <laughs> do you realize your mother has been worried sick about you? Well, to tell you the truth, I've been a little upset myself. <laughs> Mrs. Aldrich, may I please go in the living room and speak to Henry? Well, would you mind going upstairs first and washing your face and hands? Okay, but then can I please speak with Henry? What's the score, Harriet? I'm nearly 5,000, and as soon as I've beaten Henry, I'm going home. Homer, how would you like another glass of ginger ale? Sure. Young man, do you realize this is the fourth bottle you've had? It is. Well, if you drink any more, you're going to go right up in the air. Homer! Yes, Mary? Your mother wants to speak to you on the phone. Okay, I'll be right back, Ham. Do you mean to say he's actually going to leave this room for a minute? Hey, well, I had a nice nap. Father, you've been asleep for two hours. Is that so? Well, I'm glad to see Homer's gone. What makes you think he's gone? Where is he? He's phoning for his pajamas. <laughs> Look, Mother, it's just a question of time. As soon as his Aunt Harriet goes, I've got it. He's got what? Oh, well, whatever it is, I've had enough for one night. You mean you're quitting? I am. Oh, Henry, I never did get to look at your watch. It's exactly eight minutes after ten. Well, I'd like to see it, please. Well... 
Well, there's just one little thing I'd like to explain. Please give it to me. Yes, ma'am. Uh, here it is. Only you Henry, see... did you know the second hand is missing? Well, now that you mention it... And just look how this strap is worn through. Henry, I thought you promised to take good care of your watch. I didn't do that, Father. Henry, how would you like to have me take this down to the jewelers and have it fixed? But she and Harry... And while I'm there, I can have them put your monogram on it. Y- whose monogram, Henry? Oh, whose monogram on what? <laughs> <laughs> well, who, whose do you think? You mean my initials? Naturally. Oh, I don't think Henry would like that. How do you know he wouldn't? I mean, no, Aunt Harriet, you is. Yeah. Supposing Henry wanted to change his name sometime. <laughs> to what, for instance? <laughs> well, to anything. Sure. Uh, only girls use their monograms. Nonsense. Now, Henry, you let me take this, and sometime next week I'll have it engraved. But, Aunt Harriet, I'll look ridiculous. That's what I say. Young man, you aren't jealous of Henry, are you? Why? No. You wait. Someday you may have a watch, too. <laughs> well, I, I think I'll be going. Already, Harriet? Well, what do you think I am, a night owl? Now, where did I put that watch? You mean you lost it? I have. Isn't that strange? I put it right here on this table. You there, young man, where are you going with Henry's watch? Oh, I was just going to look at it under a better light. (laughs) Well, please give it here, and I'll put it in my pocketbook. Yes, ma'am. Aunt Harriet, uh, would you like to have me carry your things out of the car for you? What things? Well... Your pocketbook? Anything? No, thank you. Henry, supposing you help your aunt on with a coat while I hold her pocketbook. I'll put my pocketbook down right here, thank you. Aunt Harriet, don't you want to leave it there and go upstairs and see my new wallpaper? Sure, Mary, that's a swell idea. New wallpaper? Well, I'll go up and see it, but I know I won't like it. Hand me my pocketbook. You want to carry a heavy thing like that all the way upstairs? <laughs> Give it to me. Henry, don't you think it would be nice if we helped your Aunt Harriet up the stairs? Oh, sure. They're very steep. Here, Aunt Harriet, we'll sort of surround you. Yeah, let me take your arm with a pocketbook on it. Not so fast, boy. Henry! Yes, Aunt Harriet? Isn't this a point? Alice? Yes, Sam? Will you please tell me what's gotten into those boys? They're trying to be nice to Aunt Harriet. I doesn't like them. <laughs> but Homer's very nice and fond of her, Sam. He stayed near her all evening. Can he find any girls his own age? Here they come. There's somebody, needs somebody, coming through the wine. Well, Homer. Oh, yes, Mr. Oliver. Did you like the wallpaper? Oh, uh, very much. Well, Henry, I guess I'll be going. About what time is it, Homer? Well, my friend, it's exactly uh, 21 minutes after 10. Thank you very much. Alice, what do you think I've lost? What? So long, Henry. You wait, young man. I'll drive you home. What did you lose, Harry? I locked my car out in front and left the keys inside. What? Sam, go out and get them. And how would I do that? No, 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 no. Here, here they are in my pocketbook. Huh. Well, the only thing is... Now what? Henry's watch. You mean it isn't there, Aunt Harriet? Henry, I'm going home. It's a long home. Now, who's that? If that's my father, I'm on my way. Well, hello, Eleanor. Hello, Mr. Aldrich. Is Henry home? I just found his watch. What? His watch? Yes. Where in a... Where did you find it? He left it over at my house this morning. Now, how would you account for a thing like that? Henry, you also left this letter you forgot to mail. A letter? Oh, yes. Here, Aunt Harriet, it's for you. Thank you for my watch. To keep the mortality rate low among our troops in Korea, the armed forces must have an adequate reserve of blood plasma at all times. Every American who can should make a blood donation to the armed forces through local Red Cross chapters or local blood donor centers. So call the Red Cross or Blood Bank in your community and make an appointment. Do it now because a wounded veteran can't wait. Remember this message from General Ridgway. Every American who has given blood can and should feel that he personally has contributed directly to the saving of the life of an American boy.
The Aldrich Family, as transcribed, is written by Clifford Goldsmith. Henry is played by Bobby Ellis and Homer by Jack Grimes. Mr. and Mrs. Aldridge are House Jameson and Catherine Roth. Your announcer is Dick Dudley. Listen again next week, same time, same station, for another sparkling half hour with the Aldridge Family. Good night, everybody. That was the Aldrich family from 1952, and now the Archies. The games are here, so let's all cheer. It's Archie's Christmas party. Daddy and the Ron and Bill will sing a song. Archie and the band will play on the That was from the Archie's Christmas album, sort of a reunion of the fictional band from 2008. Like the last episode of The Aldrich Family, in this episode of Archie, they recycled the story. This was first done in 1947. Gee whiz, okay. Oh, mister? Yes, yes? Could you tell me where the cosmetic department is, please? Yes, counter seven. Thank you. Come on, Jack. And then they did a whole new broadcast of the same story two years later. Gee whiz, okay. Oh, mister? Yes, yes? Uh, could you tell me where the cosmetic department is? Yes, yes, counter seven. Uh, thank you. Come on, Jack. Here is that broadcast from December 17th, 1949. Hello? Hello, Jughead. This is Archie. Come over right away. It's a matter of life or death. Oh, relax, Archie. Relax. <laughs> Can you relax, too, so here he is again, the young familiar of readers of Archie Comics Magazine know and love so well, Archie Andrews and all his gang. And now for our weekly visit to Riverdale. It's Saturday afternoon as we look in on the Andrews' home, and at the moment, we find Mr. Andrews alone in the living room, sitting in his favorite armchair, reading the newspaper. And so the little girl said to her, Mommy, Mommy, what is it, girl? <laughs> So, mommy said, well, I'll tell you in the future. <laughs> well, she said, well, Poppy never does. <laughs> oh, those kids think it. <laughs> yes, dear. Telephone's ringing. Yeah, I hear it. Well, answer it. Well, Mary, I'm reading Fred. my... <laughs> yes, dear. Fine thing. Man can't even read his own newspaper. I don't know. He gets... Hello? Yes? Oh, this is Veronica. Oh, hello, Veronica. Is Archie home? Yes, Archie's home. Does you want to talk to him? No, I don't. All right, I'll call him to the telephone. <laughs> you don't. Well, Veronica, did you say you don't want to talk to Archie? That's right. But didn't you just ask me if he was home? That's right. But you don't want to talk to him, huh? Uh, Veronica, now, I don't mean to sound unusually stupid, but uh, whom do you want to talk to? Me? Uh-huh. You see, I'm in a little hurry right now, and I'd rather you just gave Archie a message for me. Oh, I see. Well, all right, Veronica. What is the message? Well, Archie was supposed to come over here this afternoon at 3 o'clock. Yeah? But ask him to make it 4 o'clock instead. Uh, 4 o'clock instead. I'm going down to Stacy's department store to do some Christmas shopping this afternoon. Uh, do some Christmas shopping? And there's only seven more days to Christmas, and this is about the last chance I'll have to get my shopping done. Yes, uh, seven more days. Well, I don't know why I always... Uh, Veronica. Yes? Uh, wouldn't it be simpler if you just wrote Archie a letter? A letter? Oh, I don't want you to tell him all of that, Mr. Andrew. Uh, oh, you don't? My goodness, no. I don't even want him to know I'm going shopping. You see, it's for his present. Just tell him the part about changing the date from three to four. Now, now all right, Veronica, I'll tell him. Oh, thanks ever so much, Mr. Andrew. Not at all, Veronica. Bye. Bye now. <laughs> Uh, just tell him the part about changing the date from three to four, she said. Oh, that Veronica. You know, sometimes I think she's... Oh, hey, wait a minute. By George, it's a good thing Veronica called. I forgot all about Christmas shopping, and I still haven't bought anything for Mary and Archie. Oh, good grief. I'd better get my hat and coat and get down to Stacy's right now. This is the last chance I'll have to get him something. Yes, sir, it's a good thing I remembered that. Yes, sir, a good... Oh, fine. I, uh, yes, dear. Doorbell's ringing. I hear it, dear. I hear it. Oh, all right, dear. 
Now, all right, dear, she said. Now, good, good grief, Jughead. Mr. Andrews. Yes, Jughead. Could you tell me something? Yes. When most people see other people, most people always say hello. Yes. But when people see me, they always say, good grief, Jughead. Yes. Why? Yes. Oh. <clears throat> well, now, Jughead, that is because you're such a... Uh, I mean, you're a little under... Uh, well, no, wait. Now, you look so awfully... Uh, well, what I mean is, you have such a... Uh, Jughead, I don't have time now to explain things like that. I'm going out. Did you want to see Archie? Uh-huh. Is he home? Yes, I think so. Archie! 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 Are you calling me, Dad? I am not calling the man in the moon. Come on down here. Jughead is here. Gee whiz, is he? Yes, Archie. He is he. I mean, he is. Gee, hi, Jug. Hi, Archie. I'll be right down. It's all right. Well, I'm glad that's settled. Oh, gee. Well, Jughead, if you'll excuse me, I'll go get my hat out. Why? Because I'm going out. When? Well, right now. Where? Down to the... Jughead, you have to know everything I'm going to do. Uh-uh. Well, all right. Now, if you have no objections, I will get my hat and coat. Gee, hiya, Jug. Uh -huh. What oh, brings you good. over here? Hi, Archie. I just came over to see what you're going to do. Who, me? Well, i got to meet Veronica in a little while, and then oh, we're going... Oh, Archie, uh, Veronica just called, and she said... She was she did? Uh, yes, Archie, she did. And she Gee, said... I never heard the phone ring. Uh, well, it rang. Well, now, why she... didn't you call me? Archie. Yes, Dad? Uh, do you care to hear what Veronica said or not? Oh, well, sure, Dad, sure. Then be quiet so I can tell you. Okay, Dad, okay. Okay. <laughs> now, she said to, uh, ah, yeah. She said to change your apartment with her from 3 o'clock to 4 o'clock. From 3 to 4. That's right, yeah, an hour later. She was, I wonder why. Well, she said she had some things to attend to. Well, what kind of things? Well, I, actually, I don't know. And what's more, I don't care. So stop asking foolish questions. I have to go out now, too. Well, gee was where are you going, Dad? Oh, down to the... Uh, I, I mean... Uh, <laughs> oh, just out. Hmm? Just a few little things I have to attend to. Oh, okay, Dad. <laughs> see you later. Yes, yes, Archie. I'll see you later. Bye. Gee whiz. Hey, Mr. Andrews. Yes? You forgot to say goodbye to me. Goodbye, Jughead. Be a good boy while I'm gone. I will. Bye, Mr. Andrews. Archie. Yes, Jughead? On second thought, there was something about the way your father said that that I didn't like. No, oh, Jug, forget it. But gee whiz, isn't that swell about Veronica changing our date? Huh? What's so swell about it? Well, now that Veronica's made our date an hour later, I have time to get my Christmas shopping done. But I don't want to... Well, this is practically the last chance I'll have. But I don't feel like... Good thing I thought of it. But who well, I haven't bought a thing for anyone yet. Including me? Including you. Archie, it's high time you got your Christmas shopping done. That's right, Jug. Come on. We'll go right down to Stacy's department. What are you going to get me, huh? Jug, you'll have to wait... Answer the phone when I... Oh, that's funny. It's gone. What did he say? Hello? Hello, Mrs. Andrews. This is Betty. Oh, hello, dear. How are you? Oh, fine, thanks, Mrs. Andrews. Is Archie home? Yes, dear. I think he's upstairs. Archie! Archie? Archie! That's funny. He must have gone out, too. I wish people would tell me when they're going out. Uh, hello, Betty? Yes, Mrs. Andrews? Archie doesn't seem to be home. No, dear. And, Betty, I hate to cut you short, but I have to run now. I'm just leaving to do my Christmas shopping. This is the last chance I'll have. Oh, golly, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mrs. Andrews. I haven't done my shopping yet, either. You haven't? Well, would you like to go with me, dear? Oh, I'd love to, Mrs. Andrews. All right, Betty, I'll pick you up right away, and we'll both go down to Stacy's department store. <laughs> Archie, 
Ouch, I never saw such crowds. Yes, Jughead, but when we got in that elevator and everyone started pushing, did you have to push back? Listen, Archie, that crowd, even a sardine would have pushed back. Oh, well, never mind. Now well, we're here now. And first thing I gotta buy is a compact for Veronica. I wonder where the cosmetic department is, anyway. Cosmetic department? Yeah. Gee whiz, Archie, let's go up to the sporting goods department first. Jug, we'll go up to the sporting goods department later. Come on, I'll ask that floor walker where the cosmetic department is. She whiz, okay. Oh, mister? Yes, yes. Uh, could you tell me where the cosmetic department is? Yes, yes, counter seven. But thank you. Come on, Jack. Where is it? Counter seven. Where's that? Well, that's right over near... Gee, I don't know. Oh, mister? Yes? Uh, where is counter seven? On the north side of counter six. Oh, thank you. I'll... Ju- <laughs> Mister? Well, what now? Which way is north? Oh, my lands. Sonny, you see the boys' clothing department right there? Yes. Well, you just go right down to that aisle where the dummies are and turn right. Oh, okay, mister. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Yes, madam. Can I help you? Boy, he's sure not a very friendly floor walker, is he? Maybe his wife beats him. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, Jug. I wanted to... Ooh. What was that? You bumped into that dummy. She was... Who? for a minute I thought that dummy was a real person. Uh-oh. I knocked the hat off. Wait a second, Jug, till I put the hat back on this dummy. Okay. Uh, well, if that sourpuss floor walker ever saw me bump into this dummy, he'd probably throw us right out of the store or something. I she was... Look. What's the matter? There's Veronica. Veronica? Oh, she was... If she sees me here, I won't be able to buy her a Christmas present. But she's coming right towards us. Oh, boy. Jug, I'm going to be a dummy. Huh? It's the only way I can hide from Veronica. I'm going to climb up on this platform with the rest of these dummies, and I'll wear this hat. But, Archie, I don't think you ought to... Jug, don't argue. How do I look? You're the most natural-looking dummy I ever saw. Now, Jug, don't be funny. Quick, take the price tag off the dummy's jacket and put it on me. Okay. Here it is. boy. now hang it on this button. Yeah, they're fine. Now, remember, Jug, don't give me away no matter what happens. Well, okay. But I still won't think... Jug, quiet. Here she comes. What, Jughead? Hello there. Oh, uh... uh... Hiya, Veronica. Hiya. What are you all doing here? Ooh, just a little shopping. Oh, I am, too. But thank goodness I have most of it done. Oh, that's good. The only thing I still have to get is a gift for Archie. A gift for Archie? Uh Uh-huh. But I don't know what to get him. He's such a problem. Such a... Yeah, he sure is. No use getting him a book, because he just isn't the intelligent type. Not the intelligent... And there's no use getting him a baseball glove, because he's not much of an athlete. Not much of... And there's no sense getting him a tie, because he just doesn't know anything about style. Of all the... In fact, times like this, I think Archie is an awful dummy. What? <laughs> Then again, prices being what they are, there isn't much you can get for a dollar. You know, a dollar? Did you say something, Jackhead? Oh, me? <laughs> not a word, Veronica, not a word. Oh, well, I'd better keep looking. Would you like to come along? Oh, I, uh, uh, no, Veronica, I can't. I'm, uh, I'm meeting someone here in a minute. Oh, all right, Jackhead, I'll run along. Bye now. Bye, Veronica, bye. Okay, dummy, you can relax now. A fine thing. A fine thing. So Veronica thinks I'm not intelligent and not athletic, and I don't know anything about styles, and all she's going to spend is a dollar. Hmm. Well, that's a fine state of affairs. Of course, fine... look out. Huh? Here comes a floor walker. Oh, boy, if he sees me up on this platform, I'll really have trouble. i better be a dummy some more. Mm. Yes, madam, yes. If it doesn't fit, you can return it at any time. Yes, ma'am. Oh, me, never have I seen such a rush. Never in all my days. Well, young man, what are you just standing there for? Me? Oh, I... <laughs> I'm just waiting for a friend. Oh, for land's sake. <laughs> Who put that dummy there? Oh, boy. God, that isn't the silliest-looking dummy I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't know why the stockroom can't send a dummy that at least looks half alive. I've never seen such an insipid inspection. Such, such a ridiculous posture. <laughs> Mr. Just... Yes? I'm not really a dummy. Well, that makes absolutely no difference. You still shouldn't be... Good heavens, you're alive! Uh-huh. But, but, but hit it. Man, get off of there this minute. Get off of there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
Well, what were you doing up there on that platform looking like a dummy? Well, that's a long story, sir. You I have never I was... in all my days heard anything like this. Well, yes, sir, but I, I was... have a good mind to take you to see Mr. Stacy, Mr. J.L. Stacy himself. Oh, don't do that, mister. I Just was... what would your father say if he knew you were standing on that platform like a dummy? I don't think it would surprise him at all. Yeah, he... But I... Young man, will you do me a favor? Yes, sir. As soon as you have paid for that jacket, leave the store. Yes, sir, I... Huh? I said, as soon as you finish buying that jacket, leave the store. Buying this jacket? Yes, that jacket you're wearing, the one with the price tag on it. You are buying it, aren't you? Oh, no, sir, I'm not buying it. This is my jacket. Your jacket? Yeah. Oh. Of course, you have the sales slip. Oh, no, I bought it here last and year. And you haven't removed the price tag yet? Removed the... Oh, mister, you don't understand. You see, Young man, friend, I understand was, perfectly he... well. It's quite obvious that you were trying on that jacket and for some ridiculous reason decided to pose as a dummy. Oh, but... No doubt you thought you could get away with the jacket without paying for it. Oh, but I was just... The price is fourteen ninety-five. I want the money right now. Oh, but I was just trying to... Oh, now I said... But you don't understand. This is my own jacket, mister. No fool. Jughead, tell the man this is my jacket and we... Jughead? Jughead! Young man, are you calling me names? No, no sir. I, I was talking to my friend. What friend? Well, that's just it. He, he was here a minute ago. She was, I bet he went up to the sporting goods department. Mister, if you'll just come up to the sporting goods department, we can find my friend and he'll tell you that this jacket... Young man, I am not going up to the sporting goods department or any other department until I have the $14.95 for that jacket. But that's all the money I have. I... I Hey, wait a minute. Beg pardon? I know. Mister, if I paid you for this jacket, you'd give me a sales slip, and then I could take it over to the exchange department and get my money back, couldn't I? Uh, uh, yes, yes, yes. You could do that, I suppose. Oh, well, in that case, it's all right. I haven't anything to worry about. Here's the money. Thank you. Here's your sales slip. Thank you. You're Ooh. quite welcome. Good day, sir. Good day. <laughs> Guess I fooled him. Yes, sir. Good thing I think fast. <laughs> For a minute there, it looked like I wouldn't have any Christmas money. But now all I have to do is take my jacket and go to the exchange counter and give them this jacket and this... Gee whiz. If I do that, I'll have my money back all right, but I won't have my jacket. Oh, boy, now what am I going to do? <laughs> Well, now, let's see. First thing i better do is get that bottle of perfume from Mary. Uh, so, here's the perfume counter right here. Uh, let's see now. What kind of perfume would Mary like? Gee, they certainly have quite an assortment. Let me see now. Chase me. $25 an ounce. Uh, hide and seek. $32 an ounce. Wallflower no more. Forty dollars an ounce? Hmm. I never smell anything worth that kind of money. Oh, here's another one. Evening in Riverdale. Ten dollars a bottle. Well, <laughs> that's a little better. Yes, and I think Mary likes this perfume, too. That's just what I'll get her. Hmm. Uh, oh, uh, miss, I'll take this bottle of... Gee whiz, Mr. Andrews. Be good grave, Jughead. What are you doing here? Oh, Mr. Andrews. I'm looking for Archie. Well, I thought you were with Archie. Oh, I was, but we sort of got separated. Oh, I see. Well, I'm trying to get one of these sales girls to wait on me, but they're all so Gee, busy. Gee whiz. Uh, what's the matter? There's Mrs. Andrews. Uh, Mary, where? Right over there, with oh, Betty. for good grief, what's she doing here now? If she sees me with this bottle of perfume, she'll know what I'm getting her for Christmas. Oh, well, she's coming this way. Yeah, I know. No. Oh, cool. I'll just duck this bottle of perfume in my pocket there, right in this pocket. <laughs> now, if she sees me, I'll just say Just that a I, moment. I... Please. Just yeah. one moment. Huh? I saw that. You saw what? Oh. Oh. Oh! Oh, now, mister, you don't understand. You don't understand at all. Oh, I don't, I, don't uh, I? No, you don't. Did you or did you not just hide a bottle of perfume in your pocket? Well, yes, I did, but... Have I... you paid for it? Well, no, but you... Well, I don't know what you call it, but we call it shoplifting. Yes, of course, it's shoplifting. 
Oh, oh, now, wait a minute, mister. I'm I'm not shoplifting anything. I I can explain the entire thing. I'm listening. Well, you see, I've been trying to get one of the sales girls to wait on me, and I just saw my wife over there, and I hid the bottle of perfume because I didn't want her to know what I'm getting her for Christmas. Just where is your wife? Well, she's right over there. Oh, oh, oh. Good grief, she's gone. I thought so. (laughs) But she was right there a minute ago. Now, Jughead, you tell man how we saw my... Uh, 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 where the dickens did he go? Who? Jughead. He was standing right here just a second ago. I don't know where Mister, he... Mister. Uh, huh? Do you imagine these things very often? Uh, imagine? Why? Oh, I went Do to... you have delusions? Yeah, but I... Spells? Do you see spots before your eyes? But I... Now, just keep calm. Just keep calm. I... There's no need to get excited. Uh... You just give me back the perfume and we'll forget the whole thing and you can go right home and lie down. Uh... Lie down? Who wants to lie down? The perfume? Please. Um, yes, sir. Here, I have it right in my... Uh... Something wrong? Uh, uh-huh. It leaked. What leaked? Is a perfume bottle. It leaked all over my pocket. See, it's half empty. Oh, for land's sake. Ugh. Now you'll have to pay for it. What? That's right. I was going to forget the whole incident, but I can't return a damaged bottle to the counter. Well, I certainly am not going to pay for a leaky bottle of perfume. Mm. Mister, mm. if you're not satisfied with the item, you can take it to the exchange department. But I must be paid for it. But I... I said I must. Oh, me, all right, you win. I'll, I'll go to the exchange department, but how I get into these things, I'll never know. Now, which bathroom do you like best, Betty? Mm, I think the dark blue one, Mrs. Andrews. I do, too. Blue is Aunt Hattie's favorite color. Oh, but is it the right size, Mrs. Andrews? Well, there's only one way to tell, Betty. I'll have to try this bathrobe on. Try it on? Uh Uh-huh. I wear the same size that Aunt Hattie does. Oh. And if it fits me, it'll fit her. Um, here, hold my coat, dear, while I step into this dressing room and put this bathrobe on. Oh, all right, Mrs. Andrews. It'll just take me a second, dear. I'd hate to go to all the trouble of buying this and sending it to Hattie and then not have it fit. Uh-huh. Then I'd only have to return it for her since she lives in the... Oh, dear. What is it? There's no hanger in here for my dress. Oh, well, hand your dress to me, Mrs. Andrews. I'll hold it. All right, dear. Here you are. I have it. Thanks, dear. I'll have this robe on in a minute. There. Oh, how does that look, Betty? Well, it looks a little big to me, Mrs. Andrews. It does? Well, I'd better take a look in the mirror. I... Oh, Betty, you don't have to hold my coat and dress. Just put them on that empty rack. Oh, all right, Mrs. Andrews. Now, let's see. Hmm. Yes, it is a little big. Yes, it sure is. I'll have to ask the sales girl if she has a smaller size. Now, wait here, Betty. Oh, Miss. Miss, could you help me with this, please? I'm... She whiz, Betty. Jughead, what are you doing here? Looking for Archie. Archie, is he here? Well, I think so. We came here together, but we got separated. Oh, what happened? Well, you see, he was being a dummy. What? He was a dummy. You know, those things that look like this. <laughs> Jughead, what are you talking uh, about? Excuse me, miss. Gonna move this rack here. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, Sam, get the other end there. Yeah, I got it. Now, easy, now, easy. Yeah, okay. Jughead, what are you trying to tell me about Archie? Betty, it's an awful long story. All I want to know is, have you seen him? No, I haven't. Well, then I better keep looking for him. He may be in trouble, and i got to find him. Well, Jughead, what kind of trouble is he in? I can't tell you now, Betty. See you later. Jug, Betty. wait, Jug! Oh, golly, that Jughead, he's the strangest... Well, Betty, how do you like this bathrobe? Oh, that's fine, Mrs. Andrews, but guess who was just here? This size does fit much better, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, Mrs. Andrews, but do you know who I just saw? Oh, Betty! What happened to it? What happened to what? The rack. What rack? The rack you put my dress on. Golly, it's gone. But my dress, my dress and my coat were on oh, it. Golly, it was here a minute ago. Oh, my dress. Betty, what'll I do? Oh, something wrong, madam. Yes, I lost my dress. I <laughs> beg your pardon? My dress. We put it down here for a minute while I tried on this bathrobe, and now it's gone. The bathrobe? No, the dress. No, no, it couldn't be. But it is, isn't it, Betty? Yes, indeed, Mrs. Andrews. Oh, my land, I have never seen such a day. Living dummies, men hiding from their wives, and now this woman loses her dress. But I... I I tell you, it was right 
under my nose. Well, I should hope so. Well, do something. Do something. Madam, what can I do about your dress? Find it. Now, madam, be calm. Just I, be well, calm. It was probably taken by mistake, and it'll be returned to the lost and found department. Well, where's that? At the other end of the floor, next to the exchange department. Oh, come on, Betty. Madam, where are you going? To the lost and found department. But, madam, certainly not in that bathrobe. Well, certainly not without it. <laughs> Jughead, where the dickens have you been? Looking for you. I know that, but where did you go when I was arguing with the floor walker? I don't know. I turned around and looked at something, the next thing I knew, you were gone. Oh, great, and just because you weren't there to tell him that this jacket is really my own, I had to pay him for it. For your own jacket? Yeah, the price tag was still on it. That's what I'm standing in this line for. This is the exchange department, and i got to try and get my money back. Jews, how are you going to get your jacket back? I don't know, but this is all your fault, Jughead. My fault? No, it's not. What did I do? I only... Archie, what in turn nation are you doing here? She was dad. Where'd you come from? Well, never mind where I came from. What are you doing standing here in your shirt sleeves? Well, Dad, I can explain. You see, I came Mary, in here with Jughead and... What are you doing here? Mary, what are you doing in your bathrobe? Oh, Fred, it's not my bathrobe. Fred Andrews, you smell. You... What? <laughs> Perfume. Oh, well, well, yes, dear, I know I do, but you, you see, dear, I was... Andrews, what are you but, doing here? Veronica. Jackhead, why didn't you tell me Archie was here? Well, Veronica, we were trying Just to... Just what seems to be the trouble here? The, oh, the floor walker. Well, look, mister, I'm trying to find out why my son is standing here in his shirt sleeve. Uh, please, there's no need to get... And I so... want to know why you smell a perfume. Lady, and what I are you doing trying... in that bathroom? Mr. Mr. Please, please don't... change my own coat. Honey, will you just keep... Honey, will you just keep... Girlie, will you not... 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 There. That's better. Now listen to me, all of you. This nonsense has gone far enough. Too far, in fact. Yes, Mr. Andrews. Andrews. Yes, dear. Yes, Dad. I should say so. But all uh, afternoon, uh, you people have made life quite miserable for me. Quite miserable. Yes. yes. Now, if there is any reason for it, I feel I'm entitled to an explanation. Well, mister, you know this coat, the one you thought I was buying? Yes. Well, my mother and father and Jughead and Veronica can all tell you that it's my own old coat. Why, of course. Yes, Archie. Why, Oh, 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 oh dear. You mean it really is his coat? I told you. Yes, and perhaps oh. you recall that you didn't believe my wife was in the store when I hid the perfume bottle in my pocket. Well, yes, but... Well, I... sir, this lady is my wife. Oh, how do you do? Well, how do you do? Yeah, I'm very and sorry. And I just found we... out that two of your men moved an empty rack while I was talking to Jughead here, didn't they, Jughead? Sure they did. And that was the rack that had my dress and coat on it. Well, Mr. Floorwalker, what do you say to that? Yeah, now, people, please, 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 no tempers, please. The customer is always right at J.L. Stacy's. We'll make amends. Mistakes will happen, you know. Now, young man, since that does seem to be your own coat, you may keep it and I'll give you a cash credit slip for what you paid me. And you, sir, yes? I'll be glad to give you another bottle of perfume, compliments of the store. Well. And, madam, yes. I'm sure we can find your dress and coat in the lost and found department, and you may keep that bathrobe at no charge. Well, thank you. I'm here, too. Just be quiet. Well, people, will that satisfy you? Well, yes, I think that straightens out everything. I'm sorry, there's been so much misunderstanding. Oh, that's quite all right, quite all right. And I'm... now, folks, if everything's settled, let's stop hiding from each other and get this Christmas shopping over and done with once and for all. Yes, Mr. Andrews. Yes, dear. All yes, right. That. Now, I... Uh... What's that? That's the five o'clock bell. Store's closing. You folks will all have to come back Monday. <laughs> come back. <laughs> Why did you do this again? <laughs> The Andrews will be back in just a minute, but first, would you like to get $6.25 for just signing your name? Well, that's what happens when you sign up for a $25 United States savings bond. You pay $18.75, and in 10 short years, you get back $25. Good idea to invest in a lot of savings bonds at that rate, wouldn't you say? It's easy for you parents to save regularly. Join the payroll saving plan where you work. It's an automatic, systematic way to save savings bonds regularly. 
First of this Christmas week, without fail, sign up where you work for payroll savings. For the hard person on your Christmas list, give a savings bond. A savings bond makes a perfect gift, a gift that keeps on giving. Remember, savings bonds cost eighteen seventy-five, pay back twenty-five dollars in ten short years. For Christmas, give United States savings bonds. And now back to the Andrews. It's Monday night as we look in on the Andrews home, and the family has just come home from Stacy's department store. Oh, oh, Mary, it certainly is good to be home. It certainly is. Woo. You know, I'm dead. I am too, dear. I've never seen such a mob. Neither have I, but at least we got all our shopping done. And if I never set foot in a crowded department store again, it'll still be too soon. Oh, well, gee whiz. Oh, what is uh, it, Archie? This letter from Uncle George. Uncle George? Uh-huh. He sent us a $50 gift certificate from J.L. Stacy's department store. Oh, no! no! That was Archie from 1949, and now one more episode of The Aldridge Family, in which you'll find out how expensive a new house is. You might pay as much as $17,000. This episode's from December 11th, 1947. Jell-O Puddings present... Coming, Mother. The Aldridge Family, based on characters originated by Clifford Goldsmith and starring Ezra Stone as Henry with Jackie Kelk as Homer. Brought to you by Jell-O Puddings. Just a taste of Jell-O Puddings and believe me, you will know they are made by famous J-E-L-L-O. Yes, Jell-O Puddings, those old-time, all-time favorites you've always known and loved. All three so rich and distinctive, so creamy smooth, with an old-fashioned homemade goodness. There's Jell-O chocolate pudding, rich, dark, and luscious. There's buttery brown sugar butterscotch and creamy rich vanilla, a trio of treats. They're made with milk and nourishing. They cook to perfection in just about five minutes. And all three Jell-O puddings are so gloriously good, you'll say you never tasted anything better. Aldridge family. There's something about a teenage boy that makes all of us laugh and remember and live again the days of our youth. And if he's a typical teenager like Henry Aldrich, it's always a pleasure to join him in the joys and misadventures that were ours when we were young. It's evening. The scene is the Aldrich living room. Father, may I just point out one thing? What? It's only seven fifty. And do you realize how much a new suit of clothes would cost? You want a new suit of clothes? No, sir. I'd rather have a school ring. Henry, for the last time, I'm not buying you a school ring. Now, I'd like to read my paper. But, Father, everybody in school is getting one. All the kids I know just went home and asked for money, and their father said, Sure, gee whiz, you're welcome to it, and just forked over. I see. But I appreciate your being economical, Father. Gee, if you didn't pinch pennies around here, you wouldn't have any bank account at all. Well, I'm glad you realize that. You've built up quite a nice bank account that way, haven't you, Father? I have. So you really wouldn't miss seven fifty, would you? <laughs> Henry, if you think I'm going to hand over seven fifty for a ring that you wind up giving to some girl... Father, whatever gave you an idea like that? Gee, the rings are solid gold with our school crest on them in two colors. Why would I give a thing like that to a girl? I don't know, son, but we all do. You mean you once gave a ring to a girl? <laughs> Henry, I'm trying to read my paper. Oh. But, Father, I haven't told you why I really need it. You haven't? You see, the teachers all feel that we need something to keep up our morale. Just imagine you're sitting in history class, see, and you're bored stiff. And you just happen to glance down and at your ring. And it's got your good old school crest on it. And, boy, you want to stand up and cheer. That's very interesting. Go on. And then you think of how much Central High means to you. And it all comes back that you're there to get an education. Yes. So you pile into your history like a ton of bricks, and you wind up first in your class. Everybody winds up first? Oh, no, sir, just me. Oh. So can't I please have a school ring? No. 
Father, have you thought of this? Henry, have you thought of this? If I bought you that ring, you wouldn't have it a week before it would be lost. Lost, Father? Lost? How could I lose it when it's on my finger? What about that fountain pen I bought you last month? You wanted to know how you could lose that when it was clipped to your jacket. Well, I didn't lose that pen, Father. No? I just lost the jacket. <laughs> I see. And I couldn't very well lose my finger. Henry, I'm not going to argue. The point is, until your memory improves, I'm not buying you another thing. Oh, my memory, Father. Is that all that's worrying you? Is that all? Henry, do you realize how important memory is? Sure, Father. And from now on, you're going to see a big change in me. Good. Boy, I'm going to remember every single thing I can lay my mind on. For instance, do you know what year the Battle of Waterloo was fought? What year? I'll go and look it up. <laughs> you wait there, Father, and I'll... Henry, look out! Gee, I'm sorry, Mother. Did I knock you over? Not quite. My goodness, Sam, what's he so excited about? Alice, I'm supposed to be a good lawyer, but I'd hate to come up against Henry in court. He does have a way with him, doesn't he? He does indeed. It's about that school rig. Sam, why don't you get it for him? I am going to get it for him for a Christmas present. Oh. But I'm not sure I'll be able to hold out that long. <laughs> Please, Mother. Yes, dear. Some more coffee, Sam? Just half a cup, please. Why isn't Henry down for breakfast? He'll be right down. My, isn't this a lovely morning? Mother, is there anything we can do about Henry this evening? How do you mean, dear? Well, with Joe Graham coming and everything, I don't want Henry coaxing for that ring all through dinner. Joe will think we haven't got a cent. Well, if Joe's interested only in your money, you might as well find it out right now. Oh, Father. Anyway, Mary, about that ring, your father's decided... Uh, Alice. What, dear? Uh, Mary, will you uh, please run out to the kitchen and fry me another egg? All right, Father. Sam, what's the matter? I don't want Mary to know I'm getting Henry that ring. She's sure to let the cat out of the bag. Oh, yes, dear, perhaps you're right. My, I can't wait to see Henry's face on Christmas morning. The only thing is, have you any idea how we can get his finger size? Sam, I thought you were going to measure his finger last night when he was asleep. I did, but something went wrong. What happened, dear? Well, I got the string nicely knotted around his finger, and just as I went to cut it, he rolled over. On the scissors? No, Alice, on the string. His hand disappeared under his chest someplace, and every time I tried to get it, he just giggled. Sam. What? Here he comes. Oh. Alice, this is a grand breakfast. Good morning, Mother. Good morning, dear. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Henry. Well, goodbye. Henry, what do you mean, goodbye? What about your breakfast? I don't feel like any breakfast, Mother. Henry, don't be silly. I couldn't eat a bit, Father, honest. I'm too... I'm not hungry. Hey, Henry. I'm coming, Homer. Henry, you can't go to school without eating. I'll eat an apple on the way. Then eat an apple right in front of me? Come on. <laughs> Boy, am I worried. Well, don't worry about it. If you haven't got two apples, she all understand. Homer, do you remember me saying anything about something my father asked me to do? What? You see the string tied on my finger? Well, I woke up this morning and there it was, and I can't remember what I tied it on there for. <laughs> well, that's easy, Henry. It was to remind you to do something. Sure it was. But I can't remember what. I can't even remember tying it on. Henry, you're in bad shape. I'll say. And right on top of my father lecturing me about my memory. Was it something you had to do for somebody else? Yeah. It must have been something for my father. He's the only one I was talking to last night. Concentrate, Henry. Concentrate. I'll say. Gee whiz, if I can't remember what it is, my father will never buy me that ring. <laughs> Didn't your father say anything at dinner about you not doing it? No, Homer, that's the awful part of it. He just looked at me. He did? Well, that's terrible. All through dinner tonight, when he wasn't talking to Joe Graham, he just kept staring at me, at my hands. Your hands? Sure. He's so mad he can't look me straight in the eye. <laughs> I wish I could help you out, Henry. Say, maybe you could. My father's in the living room with Josie. Suppose you go in and ask him if there's anything he'd like you to do. Henry, are you crazy? What if there is? Well, he might ask you to do the thing I'm supposed to remember to do. Then I'll do it. Well, okay, you stay here. Don't act suspicious, though, Homer. I won't. Oh, my work's going just fine, thank you, Mr. Aldrich. Well, I'm glad to hear it, Joe. Oh, Homer. Oh, by the way, Mr. Aldrich, is there any little thing you'd like me to do? No, thank you. You can't think of a thing? Not a single thing. That's funny. 
And now, Homer, I have something I'd like to discuss with Joe here. Oh, sure, Mr. Aldrich. And if you think of anything, I wish you'd let me know. Nice boy. Yes. Now, Joe, here's what I want to ask you. I'm getting Henry a school ring for a Christmas present. And I want to make sure I get it before they're all gone. Yes. But here's the catch. It has to be picked up in person at the school, and I don't want Henry or any of his friends to see me down there. They might suspect something. Oh, I understand, Mr. Aldrich. And I wonder, Joe, if you'd mind running over to Central High tomorrow and getting one of those rings for me. Oh, no, sir. I wouldn't mind a bit. Oh, that's fine. Uh, another thing... I'd rather you didn't mention this to Mary. I want to be sure Henry well, doesn't I'll find try, out. And but I, I don't think... know. Oh, don't let me disturb you, Mr. Aldrich. Homer, what are you doing? Wait, I tell you, I just thought I'd straighten this plant a little. Go right on with what you were saying, Mr. Aldrich. Uh, Homer, I don't want to seem rude, but can't you please run along? Sure, Mr. Aldrich. Uh, just as soon as I tie my shoelace. You just forget I'm in the room. How can I do that? Well, I'll tie it real quietly. And you just... Homer, will you please leave? Oh, gee whiz, I'd be glad to. And now then, Mr. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Joe, until we're sure we're alone. Oh, boy. Did you find out, Homer? Did you find out what they were talking about? Boy, Henry, is your father unreasonable? You mean he's mad? I'll say. And all I could find out is he's asking Joe to do something for him. He is? Oh, boy, that means he's really mad. Homer, you stay here. I'll get Mary to help me. Mary! I'm in the dining room, Henry, and please don't bother me. I'm trying to get these dishes cleared away. Mary, you, you've you got more influence with Joe Graham than I have. Won't you please ask him a simple question for me? What question? Just call him in here and ask him what father's been talking to him about. My goodness, is father talking about me? About you? Henry, he hasn't been showing Joe that photograph album, has he? Why, you... Oh, my goodness, Joe! Well, I'll wait out here in the hall. Did you call me, Mary? Yes, I, uh... I thought you might like to keep me company while I wash the dishes. Well, I guess I could. Uh, the only thing is, your father and I were... were... What, Joe? Nothing. Joe, you started to say something. What were you and father talking about? I'm sorry, Mary. I'd like to tell you, but I can't. You mean it's a surprise? No, that's what it is. Why, Joe, isn't that sweet? I just love surprises. What's that? Oh, Joe. Uh, yes, Mr. Aldrich. Uh, one more thing about that ring, about getting the size. Oh, Mary. Father, did you say... Did you say... Mary, just forget what I said. Of course, Father, I didn't hear a thing. <laughs> Joe, could you come back into the living room a minute? Yes, Joe, you just go on. And my goodness, you talk as long as you want about... About... Thanks, Mary. Uh, what were you going to say, Mr. Aldrich? Wait until I close the door. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness, an engagement ring. Mother! Yes, dear? Yes, Mother, come here. You have all the plates stacked. Mother, I'm so happy I could die. I can hardly believe it. Believe what? My goodness, after all these years, I thought it was never going to happen. Dear, what on earth are you talking about? Mary, no. Mother, yes. What? To Joe Graham. He's in there right now talking to Father. Mary. Mary, my little girl. <laughs> Mother, are you coming? <laughs> of course not, dear. Mary, I want you to know how happy I am for you. Now I think I'd like to go and get something out of my eye. Come right back, Mother. We'll have to start planning everything. I don't know how I'd be able to stand this house without you. Mother, it isn't that I don't appreciate your help. It's no trouble at all, dear. But don't you think we're rushing things a little? He hasn't even asked me yet. I know, dear, but since you'll be buying a house eventually, you should get an idea of the market so Joe will know what you're talking about. Well, I guess it can't do any harm to look. Here we are, dear. Go ahead. Thank you, Mother. Oh, my, look at the lovely pictures. Oh, I like that stone house up there. Uh, yes, ladies, may I help you? Uh, this is the Crawford Real Estate Office, isn't it? Yes, indeed, I'm Mr. Crawford. How do you do? We were wondering what you had in the way of houses. Well, now... Just wait. a small house for two people. Oh, about five rooms? Well, let's see. Uh, may I have your name, please? Mrs... Uh, that is Miss... Mother, what do I tell him? Uh, I'm Mrs. Samuel Aldrich, and this is my daughter, Mary. Aldrich. Very well. Oh, say, I think I have just the thing for you. It's a little Cape Cod, stone and clabbered, and it's a beauty. Oh, goodness, it sounds perfectly wonderful. Uh, just a moment, Mary. I'll do the talking. Uh, Mr. Crawford, it sounds as though it might be satisfactory. Uh, uh, how about the price? Oh, it's dirt cheap, Mrs. Aldrich. They're giving it away for $17,000. $17,000? Mr. Crawford, that's ridiculous. Come along, Mary. Mrs. Aldrich, you haven't even seen the house. Thank you very much for your trouble, but please forget the whole thing. But wait, you... We were really just looking anyway, Mr. Crawford. He hasn't even asked me yet. <laughs> I 
I'm glad you dropped into the office, Will. I can't seem to keep my mind on work somehow. I can understand that. It'll take a while to get used to it. Mary seems so young, I just can't picture her getting married. Boy, that wedding will set you back something. Well, I don't mind that so much. I've been watching the pennies for a while, Will. I've managed to build up a nice little bank account. Yeah? Besides, I'm sure Mary will be sensible about it. I wouldn't count on it. They all want a big splash. Oh, I don't know, Will. Well, that's one consolation about Homer. When he gets married, someone else can worry about the bills. Uh, excuse me. Hello. Hello, is that Mr. Samuel Aldridge? Yes. Uh, this is Mr. Crawford. Who? Mr. Crawford from the real estate office. Yes. I thought perhaps I'd better talk this thing over with you. What thing? About the house. Your wife apparently isn't aware that prices have gone up, and if you want a house... I don't want a house. I've got a house. But, Mr. Aldridge, your wife was in my office only yesterday. She was definitely interested in looking at a small house with about five rooms. What? And I found a little jewel for only 12000 Uh, Look, Mr. Crawford, suppose I get in touch with you. You'll do that? Yes, one way or the other. All right, sir. Well. Sam, what's happened? Is it bad news? Alice is out looking at houses. What for? Well, she's been saying she didn't think she could stand our old house without Mary, but... I didn't think she meant it literally. Well, you just said you have a nice bank account. Not that nice. Famous favorites for years. And no wonder, because you never tasted anything better. That's Jell-O puddings. Jell-O chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla pudding with that old-fashioned homemade goodness. Yes, a trio of treats, smooth as cream, rich and distinctive, with a full-bodied flavor that's luscious and satisfying. Treat the folks to Jell-O vanilla pudding tomorrow. Dress it up with sparkling maraschino cherries, a combination to tempt both the eye and the appetite. Jell-O vanilla pudding, with its enticing rich vanilla delicacy, always calls for second helpings. And there's Jell-O butterscotch pudding. How the kids go for that smacking good buttery brown sugar taste. Or Jell-O chocolate pudding with that exciting, true chocolatey flavor. All three Jell-O puddings are nourishing, made with milk, and they cook to creamy perfection in just about five minutes. So ask for Jell-O puddings, chocolate, butterscotch, and vanilla. You never tasted anything better. And now, getting back to the troubles of Henry Aldrich. Hoping to get a school ring, Henry is desperately trying to remember something his father asked him to do. Mr. Aldrich, however, has already sent Joe Graham down to the school to get the ring as a Christmas present for Henry. And Mary believes Joe is buying her an engagement ring. It's the next day, and the scene opens in the Aldrich backyard. Henry! Hey, Henry, where are you? I'm in the backyard, Homer. Where'd you disappear to? I've been around in front, resting on the porch. Resting? Sure. Don't you think I get tired watching you do all this work? <laughs> well, then you better go away again, Homer, because I'm going to finish beating these rugs. If you ask me, Henry, you're going to kill yourself doing all this work. But don't you get it, Homer? If I do all the things my parents usually ask me to do, I'm sure to do it. Do what? Gee whiz, the thing I can't remember to do. Stand back. But, Henry, I've got some news for you. Something I just found out from Willie. What? Well, you know how Willie's in charge of selling school rings? Yeah. Well, your father just bought one for Joe Graham. Homer, you're crazy. I am not. Joe went down to the school today and got a ring, and he gave Willie a check from your father. He did? Well, well, gee, what's wrong with that? Joe used to go to Central High, didn't he? Well, sure. Well, um... gee, that, that's only natural. Joe's going to be a part of the family. My father has a perfect right to buy him a school ring. Instead of buying one for you? Sure. It isn't every day a family gets a new son. Gee, do you suppose Joe will be moving into your room? You think so? Well, he's certainly welcome to it. Look, Kent, there's lots of room over at my house. No, thank you, Homer. I wouldn't think of forcing myself on anybody. Henry, where are you going? Don't worry about me, Homer. I'll, I'll be all right. Boy... Boy, am I mad. Where's that carpet beater? Yes, sir. May I show you something in snow shovels? Uh, no, thank you. I was wondering if you carried pear trees. Oh, yes, indeed. The Emporium carries everything. And if we don't... We can get it for you. Oh, well, that's fine. Uh, can you send six pear trees up to my home right away? Right away? Uh, yes, my wife's been wanting some for years. Oh, but this is December. Well, I thought this was as good a time as any to get them in. They'll keep until spring if I cover them over with earth. They will? Oh, of course they will. 
Although you know that pear trees are quite expensive. They cost considerably less than $12,000. Oh, yes, uh, considerably. Oh, and do you have paint in this department? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, how much would you like? Uh, enough to paint a house. Uh, what kind of a house? Well, it's quite a large one and very comfortable. As a matter of fact, I'm very attached to it. Oh, is that so? Oh, say, I just thought of something else she's been wanting. Yes? I'll be back in a minute. Oh, first, could you direct me to the rug department? <laughs> And as soon as I can, Homer, I'm going to send back this suitcase to my father. Will you hand me that pile of socks on the dresser, please? Oh, I have. Never mind, I'll get them. Never mind. Here they are. Thank you. One of them needs mending. Huh? I'll just throw in a needle and some thread. Might as well get used to doing my own mending. Henry, why run away now? Why not at least wait till after Christmas? No, Homer, my mind's made up. I'm leaving just as soon as I have dinner. Henry, have you any idea how tough it is on the road? I won't be begging, Homer. I'll be working my way. Working? What at? I'll find something. At least I have an education. Yeah, but... And I'm not a child, you know. Your suitcase is getting pretty full. That's what I was thinking. I guess I'll have to throw out my rock collection. You're throwing your rocks away? Hope you don't think I'm going to leave them around for Joe Graham. Henry... Did I tell you I'm pretty interested in rocks? You are? Well, that is, if you're running away. In that case, Homer, here. They're yours. Gee, Henry, you're giving them to me? Gee, you shouldn't. Think nothing of it. Can you reach up on the wall there, please, Homer, and hand me Kathleen's picture? Look at her, Henry. Look at her smiling at you. Just hand it to me, Homer. Look what she's written on it. To Henry, yours truly, Kathleen Anderson. <laughs> Just think of how she's going to feel. Think of the spring prom, Henry. Now listen, Homer. Is that our doorbell? Sure. But why should you worry about it? I guess I'll answer it, though. It's the least I can do for my family on my last night. Can I start taking my rocks out of your suitcase? Sure. Help yourself. Oh, hi, Henry. Gee whiz, Joe, I haven't even left yet. I beg your pardon? Well, come on in. Thanks. And I just want to say, Joe, no hard feelings. About what? You know, everything. Oh. Well, no hard feelings here either. Naturally. Is your father around? I think I heard him come in a little while ago. Joe Graham? Is that you? Hello, Mr. Aldrich. Well, well, it's nice to see you. I'll just go on back upstairs. Here, let me take your coat, Joe. Oh, thank you, sir. Mr. Aldrich, I, uh, I thought I'd drop over with Henry's ring. Oh, good. Thank you. I guess you'll be buying one or two more before long, eh? What's that? I uh, suppose we go into the living room and have a little chat. All right. Well, well, sit down, son. Thank you, sir. Well, well, <laughs> well, Joe. <laughs> yes, Mr. Aldrich? Oh, just call me... Well, no, there's no point in rushing things, I guess. No. No, there isn't. Rushing what, sir? Let me put it this way. Mary's a fine girl, Joe. A fine girl. Oh, yes, I like her very much. Naturally. Well, I guess I'll be running along now. Oh, nonsense, Joe. We'll be having dinner in a few minutes. You're just in time. But I was here for dinner two nights ago. Oh, well, things are a little different now. Aren't they, son? They are? <laughs> now, let me give you a word of advice, Joe. You and Mary will get along fine as long as you remember a few simple rules. Oh, we get along all right. Yes, but wait until you see how she irons your shirts. What's that? It runs in the family, Joe. They just can't iron shirts. Now, you take my advice and send them out to the laundry. But my mother irons my shirts. Oh, and that's another thing. Don't ever mention your mother. No? Your mother can't do a thing. Remember that. She can't cook, she can't mend, and above all, she can't keep house. Mr. Aldrich, my mother's a fine woman. Why, yes, Joe, and so is mine. But you'll have to choose between them. I will? Uh-huh. <laughs> and that about covers it. Oh. But I'd just like to say, Joe, I'm not losing a daughter. Father! Uh, uh, yes, Mary? Mother says dinner is almost... Oh. Hello, Mary. Why... Why, Joe. Hello, Joe. My goodness. Yes, Mary? Joe, I want you to know that I'm starting cooking school on Monday. And I'm also very good at darning socks. You are? 
Yes, indeed. You'll never have to worry about your socks in the future. You mean Mary's going to darn them? Of course, Joe. But my goodness, here I am doing all the talking. Oh, before you forget, Joe, uh, where's the ring? What? Oh, here it is, Mr. Roach. Oh, thank you, Joe. I really didn't want you to know about it, Mary, but now that you and Joe... Well, it's a Christmas present for Henry. Don't you think you'll like it? A school ring? Joe, is that what you and Father were talking about the other night? Why, sure. Oh. Oh, my goodness. Is something wrong, Mary? Joe, oh, I thought I heard you in here. Oh, good evening, Mrs. Aldrich. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And isn't it nice having Joe, you... come on. Where? Anywhere. Just come on. Mary, have you been saying anything about my mother? <laughs> Alice, does it strike you Mary's acting very strangely? I hadn't noticed. What I'm wondering about is that phone call. What phone call? From the Emporium. A man phoned a while ago and asked if I wanted the rugs delivered tomorrow. Oh, uh, Alice, I've been meaning to speak to you about that. I ordered those new rugs you've been wanting for the living room in front hall. You what? Also six pear trees and enough paint to do the whole house inside and out. Sam. And I thought we might redecorate the upstairs the way you wanted. Sam, you darling. You're pleased, Alice. Pleased? I've never been so surprised and happy in my whole life. You mean you'll reconsider about the new house? What new house? By the one you've been looking at. Dear, I never wanted a new house. What? Well, now, look. And excuse me, I want to call the Emporium and tell them to send those rugs. Alice, wait. Oh, I'm sorry, Henry. Did I knock you over? Not entirely. Listen, Father, I I started thinking about the spring prom and a few things, and then I smelled the stew Mother's cooking for supper, and I'd like to make you a proposition, Father. A proposition? Yes, sir. From today on, I'll polish the car twice a week, and I'll get up at 6 o'clock every morning to stoke the furnace. Your what? And besides, I'll shovel all the walks and carry out the ashes. What would you think of that? I'd think I was dreaming. Well, it's a deal, Father. Shake. Shake? Shake. And, uh... Henry, while this was supposed to be a Christmas present, under the circumstances, I think I'd like you to have it now. Father, my school ring. You like it, son? Like it? Boy! And, Father, I finally remembered what you wanted me to do, I think. I wanted you to do something? Sure, you wanted me to burn that pile of bushes in the backyard. What? And it's all taken care of. Henry, my pear tree! <laughs> Mr. Weast, Mr. Weast, uh, you want to know something? Well, sure. What? Well, uh, I'd like to tell you about my favorite brunette. Ah, one of those true glamour girls, I'll bet, with rich, dark tresses and glorious dark eyes. No, no. I'm talking about my favorite brunette dessert. That rich, dark, jello chocolate pudding. Why, of course, jello chocolate pudding. You never tasted anything better with that marvelous true chocolate flavor, especially made by the famous Walter Baker chocolate people. All three jello puddings, chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch, are rich and distinctive with real old-fashioned homemade goodness. Jello vanilla pudding, smooth as cream with that tempting vanilla delicacy. Jello butterscotch pudding with that buttery brown sugar taste. And say, all three jello puddings cook to perfection in just about five minutes. And they're nourishing, made with milk. So when you go to your grocers, ask for jello pudding. You never tasted anything better. Does anybody know where Mary is? Father, are you in the living room? Yes, Henry, I'm writing out checks. I've got the car polished, Father. Boy, does, does my back ache. There, that's the last one. Now, could you tell me where Mary is? I don't know where she is. Why? Well, Joe Graham just dropped off this bundle of old socks. What's that? He said Mary would take care of them. Just a taste of jello puddings, and believe me, you will know. They are made by famous J-E-L-L-O. I hope you enjoyed these great old shows. If you'd like to contact me, you can email jackbennypodcast at gmail.com. I'm John Henderson. Thanks for listening.